Now this is cool. Today we're going to be making a Toon Shader. We're going to go through the outline and the cell shading model because who doesn't love a Toon Shader? You know, I love all of that. I love the style, I love the feel, I love the way it makes models look. So uh, let's get into it. Well, you're not going to need any prerequisites, but down in the, in the description below, you'll find a download link where you can pick up a model and some textures that I've made, I've made myself. In this case, it is a rather cool looking Toonie biplane. And we've got some materials here that we can play with. So we'll just right click on one of them. We'll go create material. That's all we need to do so far. And we'll open that up. Now we'll need a constant uh, to put into roughness. And we'll set that to one because we don't want any shine at all. And we'll also grab our normal map. Um, where is it? Biplane, biplane N. Both of these are going to need to be parameters because we'll be instancing, instancing this material for each, for each component of the biplane. This is all just set up. We'll just bust through this really, really quickly so that we can get into making our tune shader. Uh, we'll also need to control the power of our normal map. We'll just grab a solid blue and we will lerp, linear interpolate, lerp these together. And I'll just make a parameter here called normal power and use that as my alpha. Now we'll go in normal. So we'll hit save. There we go. And we'll just instance that. Oh, I didn't want to duplicate. Oh, delete. We want to instance. And then we want to change these to our wing textures. The diffuse and the normal. Done and done. Now we'll open up our biplane again and drop these in. Uh. Biplane wing and the regular biplane. Boom, looking good. So we'll hit save there and plop him into our scene. Very nice. Now we'll have just have a way to, to see the to see our material as it as it comes to life and get a good look at, at how it's how it's going to affect the model with a texture on it. But if you don't have this texture or this model or or any of your own, that's okay. You can use one of the ones in the engine. If you're using the third person model, find the mannequin folder, open up animations, and just drag in the the idle animation. So that way that way you'll be able to see when uh, when the materials are done. So that's all we really need to get started, and uh, we'll transition over to working on the outline, which I think I'll use a yeah, let's use a classical music transition. Nice, that was nice. Okay, let's get into it. So first of all, uh, jump over to this link. I'll put it in the description to a video on the Epic Games YouTube channel where they go through cell shading in their own way. I'm going to be using their outline material, or at least the base of it, as a starting off point for what I'm going to do going forward. So if you want to do yourself a favor, uh, check out that video, and it will get you about uh, about this far. So once you get to about the 40, 45 minute mark, uh, head back over to this video, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get going. So uh, with, our, with our material here, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Uh, just make a, new, make a new scalar parameter. This one is our oh, can't type boundary line thickness because it's going to control well how thick the outlines are, how thick the outlines are going to appear. And we'll need these four guys. Let's drag them out for some space. Need another multiplier. Which I'll just put just put here like that. We'll take this number and we'll floor it. We'll also set a default just one. And then from that floor, we'll multiply our vector and hook it up to the network. Yeah, this is this is the exciting part. <laughs> this this is really where the magic happens. All right. So once you got that hooked up, we're going to do something similar to our normal outlines, and I think the fastest way to do this is if I just simply delete all that 
and grab all this, just duplicate it, and we'll just hook it all up like above. Easy enough. Do -do 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 -do. And that's done. We'll also change this because it's our normal lines. So we'll call it the normal line thickness. Done. Okay, that's finished. Now next, as you can probably see here, uh, our material is affecting the sky. Like it's bringing up all these lines in the, in the sky sphere. Uh, we don't really want that. And uh, well, before we get started, we're just going to make sure... Yeah, make sure to set the blendable location to before tone mapping so you don't get that weird flicker that this kind of material tends to produce. So we're going to mask out the uh, the skybox here so we're not seeing these this checkerboard pattern in the sky using a distance mask. So this effect will only be applied to things uh, that are that are close, that are closer than than the distance that we set. So grab yourself a scene texture node. Uh, we'll send the color through a divide. And the second value of our divide, we just get a constant here. We'll set it to 10,000. Good, good, good. We'll take that, put it through a desaturation. So we just get the, the black and white, the zero to one data. And the end of this into an if node. If nodes can be fairly intimidating, but there's really nothing much to it. Just send in a, an A value, a B value. And then you can perform calculations based on whether A is greater than B, A is less than B, or A is equal to B. Next, we got our, yeah, we'll duplicate our texture, our scene texture. And we need a component mask, and just to mask out the alpha. With the alpha masked out, we'll just plug in the result of this component mask into the A is greater and the A is equal to. And we'll do nothing when it's, oh, that's where we feed in this lerp. So we'll feed the lerp into a is less than B, and plug that into the emissive color. And that is how you mask out the skybox. Well, really, it's a distance mask, but we're going to use it to mask out the skybox. And that, uh, that finishes that chunk. Next, we'll be putting in another mask to, uh, to mask out things that have custom depth, because we only want the effect to be applied on certain objects, but necessarily want it to be applied to the entire scene. If you do just want to use, want to use this effect for the whole scene, then you can skip this next step. Oh, wait a sec. We're not done here with the sky. So the, so we have a post-process input zero here. We need this one to be a scene depth. Scene depth. Can't forget to set them properly. So we'll grab another scene depth and we'll duplicate twice because we need to mask the scene depth from the custom depth and obviously use our post-process input, post input zero as the control. We'll need another if and some more masks. Let's just give myself some space here. Yeah, so color goes into this mask and we just want to mask the green channel. And that goes into A. And then we'll get another mask, just the green, to mask custom depth. And that is our B. Then if A is less than B, We'll get this mask again just masking out the alpha just like before this one is if our a is less than b if our a is greater than b then we use our then we use our material and that goes into the emissive and that's it so we've we've tweaked our tweaked our material so that we can use an instance for the thickness values we've masked out the sky with the with this piece of piece of code and we're masking out custom depth objects with this piece of code. So we're well on the way. That's, uh, that's the entirety of our outline material. So go back to the editor, find your post-process volume, and we're gonna set uh, material. So post-process materials, add an entry to this array, it needs to be an asset reference. And if we go back to, back to our material, we'll make an instance. Outline instance, which we'll drop in. And then objects with custom depth. And I think I've set a few of them here to custom depth, uh, which you can enable just by searching for custom depth in the, in the details tab. And yeah, I've set custom depth on to a few of these objects. So we'll turn it on for the biplane and we'll turn it on for our guy here. 
and we got we've got outlines cranking and we can open up this instance and we can just toy around with some of these values particularly the thickness values to multiply those vectors at the start of the start of our material we can get some really striking outlines that way all right we'll keep them set to we'll keep them set to one for now and obviously we can muck about with these values you know to create uh to create the effect that we want so that's it for the that's it for the outline uh we'll move on to the cell shading and i think for this i'll use a dubstep transition <laughs> Well, that was extremely intense. Anyway, let's continue on. So we'll take our outline, uh, our outline material and just duplicate it. This is gonna be our cell shading and we'll get our cell shading happening. So with that duplicated, we'll open it up and we're gonna need to, well, first of all, delete all of this. We don't need our outlines. So that can all go. And there's also just a little bit of tweaking we need to do on our uh, depth mask and our skylight. Like you can see here, you know, things aren't calculating properly. That's because there's nothing in this A less than B. But we'll fix that in a sec. Uh, for one thing, we're not going to need this mask. So we can just plug our color uh, straight into these two. And we're also not going to need this mask, which can go straight, straight into A less than B. So don't worry about these errors uh, for the time being, because we'll just we'll just get to it, and it'll fix once it's once it's all uh, once it's all built. All right, so grab we need two of these uh, two of these scene texture nodes, a post process input zero, which I'll put at the top, and a diffuse color. So we want just the colors. Feed this into a desaturation. We'll need two of these. This is just to extract the lighting information from the scene as a yeah as a zero to one value. So we're extracting the lighting so that we can play with it in our if node. So we're just dividing the diffuse color by the post process input. We'll clamp it from zero to one, and this will be our a value of our if node. So this extracts the lighting from our scene texture. And then we'll get a scalar. This is our shade depth. And it's going to be 0 0.5 and set in our B value. So far, so good. So let's make the actual cell shading. So we'll duplicate these two again. We'll need diffuse color and post process input zero. And we'll need another scalar, this one to control our tint amount. So we'll just rename it light tint amount. Uh, we'll set that one to zero to, or to, we'll set it to one. And then I'll go straight into a multiply node, which will multiply by the post process input zero. And we'll add it, we'll add our diffuse color. And this will go into a multiply and we'll be multiplying it by our color. So we'll convert this to a parameter. We're going to call it light tint. We'll put it into an append because we want to simplify it so that it is just light. We'll append zero and this will make up the other side of our multiply node. And this gets us our light tint. So we'll be sure to set it to white or very, very nearly white. We'll go very nearly white. Now multiply all of this for our dark tint. So instead of light tint, we'll call this one dark tint and our scalar instead of light tint amount needs to be dark tint amount. And that's it. That gets us, this gets us our two sides of cell shaded lighting, our light and our dark. Speaking of, we'll set our dark color to a darker gray. So our light tint goes into A is greater than B and a dark tint into A is less than B. Then our if just connects up to the connects up to our, our sky mask and our custom death mask. And that's all there is to it. That gets us our cell shaded lighting. So to recap, we extract the lighting as a zero to one value. If the lighting is 
or greater than 0 0.5, it is it gets this light tint, and if the lighting is lower than 0 0.5, it gets a dark tint. Pretty easy to follow, pretty easy to understand, and we control the amount of depth the shadow has with this scalar parameter here. Other than that, that's it. We already covered the, the distance mask and the custom depth mask, so just hit save. Back over here in the editor, we'll take our cell shading and we will uh, just right click make an instance, just hit enter. We'll grab our post process volume once more. We'll find our materials and hit this little plus next to the array to add a new one. Make it an asset reference and we'll drop in our cell shading. And that, the, uh, the results are immediate. So we can see clearly what's, uh, what the cell shading is doing. We can even grab our plane here and you can see the interaction of the shadows there. This, this very striking two-tone shading. That looks, looks quite attractive as it's sort of bouncing off the model like that. And we can open up our instance, turn on all of this, see our depth, we'll control how much, how much shade hits objects. We'll keep that at 0 0.5 for the, for the perfect half. We can control how much tint hits the scene, how much of this color, the light and the dark, and we can control the raw values of the light and dark tint. So we can get some proper, proper shadowy colors going on there, if I make that proper white. Even on our guy, and if we we'll jump in, so I've got custom depth on the third person character, so he's being affected uh, in real time. Even all the animations looks very very cool, and just with the combination of these two materials, the outline and the cell shading. So if we get our outline instance, we can play with these values too. I can crank up these normal lines, and. Yeah, normal line multiplier. So all of these values can be can be manipulated to get the effect that you want out of your models. So if you want like a really heavy, really thick sort of outline, you can do that. Or if you want like a really discrete sort of downplayed, uh, downplayed sort of look, then you can go with the defaults, which I quite like. I love the I love the outline. It looks fantastic. So that's really the the end of the tutorial here. Uh, I hope this helps people. This is a great tune shading method. It's the easiest one I've found, and I've been. Uh, been playing around with tune shading effects with this type of post processing for a while now so it's good to find one that's uh that's relatively simple that is as effective as this and for some closing thoughts i've noticed that this kind of model or this kind of system works really really well on models with a high poly count and a lot of hard edges and i don't know about you guys but i have the perfect thing i have a zoid so those of those who have followed my work will uh will be familiar with this model i made it a couple years back uh, and I, I just noticed that it looks absolutely fantastic when it's lit in this toony style. Even as the light hits it, give it a bit of a rotate, you can see. Yeah, the the effect the effect is uh, the effect is really really good. So anyway, that's it from me this time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.